Hello and welcome to this video on how to aggregate rows in Power Query. Now we're going to focus on Power Query in Excel in this video and we're going to look at how to aggregate both numeric and text values. Now there are two main reasons that you want to aggregate rows in Power Query. One is to produce a pivot style report and use Power Query instead of formulas or a pivot table. The other reason to aggregate rows is to reduce the number of rows and the granularity of the data, therefore reducing the size of the table. And we're going to see a little bit of both of those reasons in these examples. So to start with, I've got a blank Excel file and I'm going to connect to an external Excel file. So data, get data, from file from Excel. And from here, I'll navigate to where my file is. Create that connection. And from the navigator window that appears, I'm going to ask it to bring in everything in the Excel file. You can see that we have four tables and also four sheets which is the same data, but without that table structure. If I click on transform data to throw this into Power Query, I'll quickly rename the query and just simply call it data. And then perform some simple transformations, such as to filter the kind column to remove the sheets, to select the first two columns and remove other columns. And then on the first column, I want to use replace values to remove the TBL prefix before each of those tables. So I'm left with the name of the location and the data which is in this table structure. Now one place where you see the opportunity to aggregate is when you're expanding table structures in Power Query. So if I went to expand these tables with the button in the data column header, you see there is the option to aggregate in here. So we're seeing this right now as I'm bringing data from multiple tables or multiple sheets and combining them into one. You also see it when you do a merge query. That's another common scenario to see this aggregate option. It's just providing me with the options of count at the moment. There's a drop down list on the end where you can access other aggregation calculations. But right now it's just offering us count and we're not going to do it this way. We're going to focus on the group by feature of Power Query. But just a brief mention that you can perform some aggregations on your data at this point. Coming back to expand and removing the prefix, this will give me my initial kind of base table data. And we're going to look at two different groupings or two different aggregation of rows from this data. I'm just going to set the data types for each of these columns before I proceed any further with our next report. Now for our first example, we're going to create a report for the number of attendees for each course that we've offered across all dates and all locations. And we could do this with a pivot table or we could load this data as a table and use formulas such as sum ifs and sort. But we're going to focus on Power Query here. Now to begin with, I'm going to reference this base query. So I'm going to right mouse click the query on the left in the queries pane and click on reference so that I've got that initial prepared data and now we can focus on one of our two reports. Let's rename the query to start with and I'm simply going to call it by course. That will do for now. I'll click on the course column and with that selected, group by on the home tab. Now I'm just going to do a basic group in here. There is the option for basic and advanced. 
we'll see the advanced option next. Do I want to group it by course? Yes. And a new column will be called total attendees. We get to choose which operation we'd like to perform. So for now, I want a sum. And the column I'm summing is the one named attendees. And what this will do when we click OK is give us this report listing each of the courses and summing the attendees for each of those courses. Just like a pivot table would produce for us. I can go ahead and change the data type of the total attendees column to whole number and we're happy with what we have achieved. But let's take this a step further and look at some advanced grouping and also how we can aggregate rows that have text values. So if I right mouse click on data again to reference and create a second query that references that initial base data, I'm going to rename this one as by location and date. And yes, as that name of query suggests, I'm going to select both the name column, which is the location here, and the date. So I want to group it by both. So we can see we've got multiple courses happening in a given location at a set date. So right from the top, we're, there are three different courses occurring on the 13th of March in London. But I want that to appear as one row. Yeah, I want to reduce the granularity of this data and each date for each location should be shown as one row. So by the end of this, there will be four rows for the 13th of March because I have one for each location. Now, if we click on group by above, it takes us immediately to the advanced section because I selected two columns. If you only selected one column, we could have chose advanced ourselves and clicked the add grouping button to specify that second columns are grouped by. It was an imperative that we selected the two columns in advance. Down the bottom though, we're going to add three different aggregations this time. Now to begin with though, I'm just going to add two and you'll see why. So for new column name, let's go for total attendees and the operation will be a sum and on the amount column, sorry, the attendees column. So that's just as we did in the previous example, although this time grouping by name and date column. And then we'll click add aggregation. So I could add on to that, that I'd like another column called distinct count. And for the operation that will be to count distinct rows. So not only do I want to know how many attendees at a given date in a given location, I'd also like to know how many different courses were run. So for London on the 13th of March, the answer for that second aggregation would be three whereas the total attendees would be the result of 16, 11 plus two plus three. Okay, let me click okay, and that will produce this report. So we'll see the name, the date, total attendees and distinct column, sorry, distinct count column. Brilliant, creating this report really easy, no formulas to write, and we don't even need a pivot table to produce these kind of reports. But I said that I wanted three columns and I can see I'm missing the data of which courses were run at those locations on those dates. And I'd like it to tell us which courses they were. So what were the three courses on the 13th of March in London? Now looking over at the applied steps, the group to rows feature has that little gear icon, that little cog on the end. And when you see that, it means you can edit that step within a window, so in a user-friendly way. So I'm gonna click on that gear icon and it simply reopens the group by window. Absolutely fantastic, makes it easy to come back here and correct mistakes or any other modifications. Now I'm going to click on add aggregation because I wanna include the names of these courses. 
I'm simply going to call this new column courses. And for the operation, they don't offer one to handle text. There's not one called concatenate or text join or merge or one of these terms that you may be familiar with from an Excel environment when it comes to combining text together. So I'm going to leave it as sum. And I'm going to ask it to sum the uh, column called course, which is a text value, that's the name of the course, so it's not going to be happy with being asked to sum it. But we'll persevere and click OK, because although the error is expected, it has written some code, some M code above, that we are going to edit to take this over the line. So looking up at the formula bar, if you're new to M code, this can be a little bit overwhelming, but hopefully you can see the different columns that were generated in this group function. We can see the list.sum for attendees. We can then see the distinct count column and this table.row count function. And then we've got this list.sum at the end, which we just produced. And I'm going to come up to that formula bar and change list.sum to a different function, which is text.combine. And as I'm typing, I see it in the list below, so I'll give it a click. And within the brackets, if I click just before the closing bracket of that function, and I put in a comma, we already have the reference to the course column because of the the group by functionality we, we gave it. And that's great, that saves us a job. But I'm getting this message coming up telling me that this function concatenates a list of text values. Excellent. And it gives me the opportunity for a separator. This second argument is a separator. So I'm going to ask it to put a comma space in. Within the double quotes, I'm gonna write a comma space, something many of you are probably familiar with even if you haven't uh, dabbled with maybe M so much. And with that done, if I just click somewhere else to confirm that, we have our result. And I can widen this column just to see what we have here. There we go. Let's just click right around these steps just to kind of wake it up and get rid of that horrible red bar. So we've got our result. We've now aggregated the text. We've concatenated into a single cell. So we can see that the three courses on the 13th of March London were Power BI Advanced Excel Formulas and also an Excel Basics course. Notice that because we have got involved with the M code here, that when you look to the Applied Steps pane, that gear icon that was beside group rows has now disappeared. So you can no longer edit this within the window because text.combine was not an option available in that window. So if we need to make further modifications. Now let's look at loading these two reports into Excel to finish this task off. I'm going to use close and load, close and load two, and set it as connection only. Because that original data query, I don't want that loaded as a table as it does by default. So they're all loaded as separate queries, connection only. And now I can right mouse click on each query in turn, load to, and going quite quickly here, load them onto the same sheet for this example. They certainly do not need to be the same sheet. You would load them to any sheet, any cell as you uh, deem fit. I'm going to stick this in just column E here for the purposes of this demo. And I won't bother loading them to the data model. But we now have uh, these two outputs, these two reports, all generated by Power Query, no formulas, no pivot tables, using the functionality of, of group by to aggregate the different rows. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to receive the latest video tutorials at this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all again soon.